Hello, welcome back to Bethanaeum. My name's Ellie Marie. Let's talk about writing a premise for your work. So a quick disclaimer before we get started, this video is actually the second in a set of two for today's vlog post. The first one was about genre, and if you haven't gone over to see that, make sure you go and watch it after you watch this one, and you can learn a little bit more about the various genres in the fiction and non-fiction categories, and maybe find which genres fit your work. And if you have watched genre and you are coming now over to watch Premise, welcome, and I'm so happy you came. All right, so what is a premise and why do you need one for your work? Let's touch on those two topics really quick and then we will move on on how you can write a premise for your work. A premise is a brief synopsis of your novel that is meant to answer the question, so what is it about, while also piquing interest for whoever is asking to want more. So those little blurbs you read on books, that's kind of a premise. The premises we're gonna be working on writing today, however, will only be one or two sentences that will be easy to memorize so that when you are asked, so what is your book about? You have something to offer. And it's something that gives the basic understanding of your book, but asks the person inquiring to want more. And that is the idea behind a premise is that it gives you something that you can share with others and it gives you something to look at while you are working on your work and to push towards. That way when you're in the middle of the slog that is NaNoWriMo, you can look at your premise and you can say, okay, am I still on base? Am I still aiming for that target that matches those one or two sentences of my premise? And if I'm not, then I need to reevaluate. Is my premise wrong? Or is what I've been focusing on writing not the same thing that I was originally writing? And either way, it'll point you in the right direction for your work in the middle of NaNoWriMo, which is the hardest part. So now that you know what a premise is and why you might want one, let's get into the two ways that I use to write a premise. The first way to write a premise is the easiest, and it is the simple what if, what if statement. And if you are a new writer, or if you're new to writing a premise, or you just want something that's easy to remember and easy to rattle off this is the method for you and basically you ask yourself what if and what if so let's use my NaNoWriMo work for this year as an example for a premise using the what if what if method so my work is a thriller it revolves around primarily one character who's a rec recovering drug addict who is a newly single mom she moves to a small town, and the small town is very definitely keeping something from her that has to do with her. So let's see how we can put this into a what if, what if question. So the first what if is gonna be about your character, because that's the first thing you want to introduce to people when they ask about your work. So for mine, it would be what if a recovering drug addict, newly single mom, found herself accepted into a program to help people in situations just like her. So then the second what if is going to deal with the situation. So you have character and situation, and this is a very basic introduction to your story. So our character, what if a newly recovering drug addict also finds herself as a single mother and being accepted into a program who helps people in her situation? And what if the small town that she moves to is keeping secrets from her at which she finds herself in the middle of. Sentence doesn't quite make sense, but that's because I'm not writing it down and the whole point of these videos is I am a writer, <laughs> not a public speaker. But you get the idea. Your first sentence is gonna be a what if, my character, what if the situation they find themselves in. And those are the two pieces that make up your what if statement. I will have my what if statements for this written down below in the description so that you can look at them and read them and get an understanding and feel for them. So that is the first method, the what if, what if method. And that is the simplest, easiest method for writing a premise if you are wanting something quick and fast or if you are new to writing premise or new to writing. 
All right, so our second method is a little bit more complicated, but it produces a premise that is a bit richer and a bit fuller and sounds more like what you would read off of a book. So I actually have this written down to make it a little bit easier for you to understand. And I will also have this written in the description below. And it's kind of like that. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So you have, so you have situation, character, goal, opponent, and disaster. I forget my notes that I'm hiding with my fingers. Um, so you have care, situation, character, goal, opponent, disaster. And you can see how that's way more categories than the first method, which is just what if character and what if situation. So obviously this is going to take a lot more time and it's going to be more complicated. So let's use my NaNoWriMo project from last year, 2017, because this is the method I used to write my premise for this. So I already have one written and let's evaluate these five pieces of this premise writing method. So you have situation for my work last year among the sands, the situation was that Nuresh, the high kin, had chosen a new wife who would be the next high matron of the clan. My characters were Greet, the thief from the Skrit community, which is a lower community who is often used as slaves or low pay trade, low pay wage or wage people. And you have High Kim Naresh, who I already mentioned before, who is part of the ruling group and is like a king. And then you have Goal. Naresh's goal is to bring stability to his clan between these two people groups. Greet's goal is to take care of her family and those she cares about. Our opponent is War and the Black Dragon, which this is a moment to note that all of the information you put down in these when you are going through them as an author doesn't mean it has to go into your premise because my premise doesn't mention anything about the black dragon because he's kind of my big my big my big censure he's my big thing and i don't want to give it away in the premise but you can write it down still for your own sake so that you remember okay black dragon is a big part of the novel and but war is one of the big opponents and the disaster is war um, in my particular work, the disaster and one of the opponents really are hand in hand. Even the black dragon kind of falls in with war and war coming to a clan from an outside separate clan. So how can we piece all these pieces together? The character, situation, the character, the goal, the opponent, and the disaster. So let's look at how we can pair all of these together and i'm going to read for you my premise that i actually have written for my work from NaNoWriMo last year you have in clan rothdari high kin naresh so i have named my place and my characters has chosen his wife greet a thief from the poor script family who wants only to protect those she loves so i have touched on my situation my characters and my goals already and that's in a brief statement what will they do when war comes to their doorstep and the love they have kindled is attacked from within sorry i'm reading it and so in that last statement you have both the opponent and the disaster so while it's a little more vague than just sitting down and writing out the answers to those, it does fit all of those. And it does give the reader an idea of what to expect in my work and what to expect when picking up my book or reading my story that I have written. And that's the point of a premise. The biggest thing to note with my premise is that while it explains and gives them a little taste of what they are going to expect, from my book, it doesn't give it all away. Note, I didn't talk about the black dragon. I didn't talk about how Naresh chooses her as his wife. I didn't talk about how they managed to fall in love. All of that is in the story and it is implied that it is in the story without being in the premise. And that's what makes a good premise is it gives them a touch, a taste of what is in your work without completely giving it away. And so if you choose one of those two methods, you will be able to write a premise that does just that. I believe in you, I have confidence, and I know that you can do it. And hopefully you will be better than me in memorizing your premise and being able to share it with people because apparently I can't do that. I have to read it, otherwise it comes out all garbly. You heard me trying to write one in my head for my 
current work, which is called Sacrificial. I don't think I've actually told anybody that yet, except for the NaNoWriMo page. So all that being said, you can write a premise and it will give you something to share with people who inquire. It will give you something to look at as a goal when you are working through NaNoWriMo. And I highly encourage you to do it. It's a fun writing practice. It helps you look at your work in a different way, in a way maybe beyond what you are looking at it in. And so I hope that this has been encouraging and helpful to you and that you have found something from it. And again, if you haven't watched Genre, which is the second part of our vlog posts for today, I encourage you to go over and do that now. And I would also like to take this moment to ask you to subscribe if you haven't yet and make sure you hit that little bell so that you can get notifications when I post new vlogs, which is every Tuesday and Friday. And you can catch me over at my blog on bethanam.com, which I post on every Monday and Thursday. And as always, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you and your time. Bye.